Good evening, everybody. It's Pastor Jesse, and uh, we're going live again tonight for our devotion, looking at the uh, Lord's Prayer. Hopefully people are jumping on. Last night we talked about the Lord's Prayer, and starting it, uh, this is the week in uh, history, in church history, that we begin to focus on the Easter season. This Sunday is Palm Sunday, so one thing that we are uh, focusing on this week is getting our hearts ready and preparing ourselves for the Easter season. The Easter season coming up. Uh, this coming Sunday is Palm Sunday, which uh, I'm excited about. Just want to remind you of uh, Palm Sunday. We, we do our recording on Saturdays, typically. And uh, then we have them uh, produced. Just want to do a big thank you to uh, all of our tech team who are still coming out on Saturday, even though they're not coming on Sunday. They're still coming out on Saturday and helping us every Saturday. Uh, you've got uh, Tim Hayward is coming out and Rand Richards and uh, Noah is coming out. And uh, all of our, our tech team are still coming out and they're still uh, actively involved in helping us produce the messages for this Sunday. So just want to do a thank you to them and for what they, uh, what they have accomplished. We are working on uh, going uh, live because this, this Sunday we are going to uh, be doing communion. It's communion Sunday this Sunday, uh, which is normal. And uh, every, every year we do, uh, I'm sorry, the first Sunday of every month, we do communion. And so we as a church want to do communion this coming Sunday. So I'm going to share this announcement again at the end. But uh, for those who are joining right now, uh, there are two ways that we're going to do communion uh, live this Sunday. You'll still have uh, the recorded message on Saturday that you will be able to access at 9 o'clock on Sunday morning. But uh, we're going to take three different live communion times. The first one will be at 9 o'clock, the second at 10, and the last one will be at 11. So if you and your family want to uh, get ready for communion, you can go out and get uh, the, the crackers and uh, you can go out and uh, get some grape juice uh, as the elements and do that. However, uh, you know, we, we might be a little different than uh, your typical um, uh, historical church where, hey, if you want to, if you want to go out and uh, grab, even if you get pop and uh, sandwiches, <laughs> taking communion uh, is not about the elements. It's not about the sacraments. It's about remembering what Jesus did for us on the cross. But if you want to go out and you want to do it uh, the way we do it at church, go ahead and get some uh, grape juice and get some uh, matzah crackers, uh, unleavened crackers, uh, and there'll be a, uh, so my sermon on Sunday is called Come to the Table, which we will be talking about communion. And I'm doing a, a pretty big study on it, and it's very interesting where communion came from, uh, what it really means. The, uh, the, it's, it's more than just symbolic. It also has some meaning all the way back, stemming all the way back into the book of Genesis. So we'll be looking at communion. I will be teaching that. That'll be available at nine o'clock uh, this coming Sunday, April 5th. And then we will be taking communion at nine o'clock, 10 o'clock and 11 o'clock Facebook live here at our uh, Lake Point Church Facebook page. You'll want to uh, connect on with that and we will take it live all together. Linda Marie is saying, hi, Pastor. Jerry Hammerlin is saying, cookies and milk. Uh, great idea, but uh, uh, hey, whatever whatever it takes. Betty 
Betty Beamer saying hi. Hello, everybody. Ritz and apple juice in the pantry. Perfect. Don't go out. Stay home if you don't have to and uh, use those things. That's, that's all very good. So uh, I will have the, uh, the communion table that we use on the first Sunday of every month. It will be out and it will be prepared and ready to go for us to take communion in the lobby. Uh, I will be, give, of course, giving those uh, uh, sacraments and taking it. Now, if you don't feel comfortable enough uh, if, uh, uh, that you want to just take it yourself at, at your house, uh, then I will stand in as a pastor. Uh, I have no problem standing in and taking it for everybody in the church. So don't feel like that's something that you have to do. All right. Also, uh, we are in the process. Deb Hopman and uh, the uh, quilting ministry, which is called Prayers and Squares, they are actually making masks right now. They have between 150 and 200 masks already made. I've heard that uh, Pontiac uh, General is completely out of mask and other, other uh, personal items, uh, the protective equipment, the PPEs. Uh, and so this group is uh, making masks right now. Uh, so if you are interested in helping Deb Hopman and Prayers and Squares to make masks, you'll want to contact Deb Hopman. She's got all the directions how it is. They, they are the filtered masks that uh, the hospitals are asking for. So if you are interested in helping with that and being a part of that, you can contact her. I'm not going to give her information here, but if you want her information, go to my Facebook page and message me through Messenger or text me if you have my phone number, and I will get you Deb Hotman's phone number, and you'll be able to contact her. I don't want to put that out over uh, Facebook, but uh, I will get that to you if you want. Hey there, the Wojans. Hi, Wojans. Hey, there's my brother, Drew. I uh, just want you to know my parents actually surprised me, and uh, they're actually home right now. They got home uh, about uh, half an hour ago. So they are home and well, and uh, they are uh, excited, glad to be home. So this week we're looking at the Lord's Prayer, and you can follow along with a devotional. If you go to the version. if you go to uh, the app that we use, it's the same app that we use to get our notes. If you don't know the version, you just go to your uh, wherever you buy your apps from. It's a free app, but you can go to wherever you get your app and uh, download the version app. And when you get in there, uh, look for a journey from worry to confident hope, praying through the Lord's Prayer. It's with Bishop N.T. Wright. He's a bishop in the uh, Anglican Church in England. And uh, he has a, uh, I'm reading a couple of his other books right now, and they're just really good. One of the books that, uh, that he wrote has really inspired me for my Easter message. There will still be an Easter message, uh, and that is why uh, Easter is better than Christmas. And I'm not just talking about the holidays, uh, but you'll have to uh, tune in for that when that comes. But what uh, this journey from worry to confident hope, uh, if you pass by our church, and uh, you shouldn't be out and about, but if you happen to be out doing something uh, that you're supposed to be doing, uh, you can drive by our sign, and uh, our sign says, there is always hope. And I put that up myself just uh, about a week ago or so, and actually saw a lady out uh, walking uh, for exercise the other day, and she stopped and she took a picture of our sign that said, there's always hope, because there is always hope. And in this message, we're talking about a journey from worry to confident hope and praying the Lord's Prayer. It's actually uh, a pattern of prayer, the Lord's Prayer. It's, it's actually a pattern for us to pray. It's something that I actually do myself. Uh, I take the Lord's Prayer, I've divided it into uh, seven different prayers, and I pray those through the course of the day at different hours of the day. Uh, first thing I do in the morning as I get up and uh, as my feet hit the floor, the first thing I do is I open that version app and uh, I, I actually go and I uh, go through all those. Uh, there's Joe and hi Aunt Joe and there's Karen Kozlowski, hello, hi. And uh, uh, oh, uh, and Reba is just telling me right now on here that Deb Hotman's contact info is also in needs and offers. So if you get that, you can contact uh, you can contact her as well. But the Lord's Prayer is a pattern of prayer for all of us. Yesterday, we looked 
at the, the prayer as a whole. Uh, that whole uh, message, the, the whole devotion yesterday is on our Facebook page at Lake Point. Uh, you'll be able to see that. It's downloaded. Um, you won't be able to see all the comments. Those aren't all on there, but uh, you'll be able to watch that video if you want. If you don't want to watch it on Facebook and you want to get it, it'll be up on our website here pretty soon as well. But how I'd like to start off this evening is just pausing for a moment and actually uh, praying the Lord's Prayer again. We'll pray it at the beginning here, and we'll pray at the end. And and some people, uh, and I remember this in Bible school too, I would have uh, friends that would say, well, if you pray the Lord's Prayer over and over and over again, isn't that a vain repetition? And I said, no, I, I don't think so, because Jesus warned about vain repetitions right before he taught this prayer, and it becomes a pattern for us to be praying on a regular basis. So I think praying it over and over and over and over and over again and when it lo begins to lose its meaning is when it's a vain repetition. But to pray it and to pause in between the different uh, parts of the prayer and to look at it holistically as a prayer, I don't think that that is uh, necessarily wrong at all. And I just want to do another shout out because my daughter Olivia is on here and she's saying, hi, Dada. Hi, Livy. How are you? So let's go ahead and just pray. And uh, just pause for a moment, and if you know the prayer, you can pray it with me. If you, if you don't know it, you can just listen. But it goes, Our Father, who is in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, and your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen and amen. So let's go ahead and uh, begin to, to look at tonight's teaching and uh, uh, what we're uh, primarily looking at is, is the power of prayer as a worship. Jesus uh, really, uh, when he introduces this prayer to people, uh, it's actually to his disciples, his disciples come to him and say, Lord, can you teach us how to pray? And he says, yes, here's how you do it. And he gives them a pattern of prayer. That's what the Lord's Prayer is. It's a pattern that they can then take for the rest of their lives and what they do and how they pray. And it, it, it has a uh, an echoing or an essence of it of a temple prayer, a prayer that the Jews already knew what to pray in the temple on, on, on a regular basis. But when he begins to, uh, uh, when Jesus teaches this prayer, you can only imagine when he, when he looks at his disciples and says, yes, pray this way. And he says, our Father in heaven, holy is your name. Now, this sounds like the beginning of uh, a temple prayer all throughout history. Uh, the temple is a symbol of Jewish life and worship in Jerusalem. In the temple, nothing unclean is allowed to uh, come in. It's basically symbolic of you're not allowed to bring sin and you're not allowed to bring death. They're not permitted to be in front of God. But when Jesus says, our Father in heaven... I can only imagine that the disciples probably did uh, what we tend to do as kids or maybe even sometimes as adults. We, we shut our eyes, but then Jesus says, Our Father in heaven, holy is your name. And they probably opened their eyes and start, started looking around going, Wait, what? <laughs> First of all, Jesus starts with the word our, and then he adds to it, Father. Not a normal way to start a prayer as a Jewish person. First of all, he is God. He is Jehovah. We don't say his name Yahweh. We don't say his name as a good Jewish person. They didn't back then. But when they, when they would approach God, it was as the creator of the universe, which we still do in all holiness. But Jesus teaches them at this moment, you are allowed to approach him, approach him as Father. As a father, he's holy, he's above all, he's great, and he's mighty. But we are allowed to approach him, as Jesus would say in, in Hebrew, Abba, 
Abba, Father. And suddenly the prayer goes from a pattern of being like a temple prayer into a very personal prayer. You say our, all together, we collectively, our Father in heaven. Suddenly it goes from addressing God himself but and personalizing him to be the Father God. Jesus is saying in effect here because Jesus, God is his Father. He, Jesus is the Son. But Jesus is teaching his disciples, you are allowed to approach him the same way that I approach him as father. And it humanizes and, and takes the prayer to a whole different level. So just even the first two words, our father takes the Lord's prayer and personalizes it. In the Old Testament, the notion of uh, addressing God as the father was very rare. We do see the idea in Deuteronomy and in Hosea, but it's just an idea. Jesus takes it and makes it something very personal. He takes the king of the universe, the God of the universe, and puts him at a place that we can approach him in an intimate way. Didn't happen very far, not much before. So we, we proclaim our dependency on him still, but our confident, our confident hope is in God who cares now and watches over us. We are addressing the true God and the creator God, yet there is also a familiar intimacy invoking God as our father to call upon the name of the same one that was with Jacob and Isaac and all of the uh, forefathers that have gone before. But when Jesus says now, I say, it says this, that he is our father, it makes it a very personal prayer. When the worries of life uh, are, are, are closing in, um, these, these well-known words, our father in heaven, holy is your name, serve as a compass and a guide that will guide us in truth. They guide us into truth and teach us to pray with a confident expectation. We as his children, our father, that makes us a child before him. When we look at that, uh, it it is saying that he is the compass and the truth. He is the one that we need to look to and be a part of. We're addressing him as God and as King. It's just an amazing thing that uh, that that Jesus takes this and just makes it so personal and brings it right down to to uh, who we are and and what He wants us uh, to be. But praying in confidence, in confidence, and how that works. So this temple prayer then becomes very personal. And we uh, become uh, and we address and we look at him just to, and in Jesus, just as he is uh, 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 addressing the disciples and he's teaching them to pray and he's saying to them, uh, th this is the gift of the Holy Spirit. Those who belong to and follow the King of Kings have now become part of God's new family. And this, this really is a, a concept that is very new and uh, really throws it all off, throws the whole, whole, the whole thing out of balance because it is showing, Jesus is showing just with these two words, our Father, that we are indeed family, that we are family. Uh, Jesus did not come just to establish a church. We are the church. We know you've heard me say it many times uh, that we are a church. Right now, we have proved, I've been preaching all year long, that the church does not have to be in the building all the time. And we are still a church, and we are not in the building. I believe that we have proved that. We are scattered abroad, but we are all together united in one under this fact that Jesus says in these first two words, our father. He's the king of kings 
and he's the Lord of Lords, but he is now taking us and he is giving us a new family. And we are encouraged, hear this, we are encouraged to call him our father because this is now our prayer. Jesus, this is the model prayer. It's a better way to say this is it's not the Lord's prayer. It's the model prayer for us to be praying and we must start it and we must address him as our father. Now, this is something that's hard for us maybe to grasp because of the church that we're in. It's not as traditional. It's not as uh, formal. And you'll hear me and other pastors and other speakers speak on Jesus is our father. But remember at this point, nobody claims God as father because then you're saying that I am a son of God or I am a daughter of God and only Jesus is the true son of God. But Jesus is taking this and saying, yes, that's true. I, I'm the only son, but you are included in the family. You are an adopted daughter. You're an adopted son, adopted into the family. And then God becomes father over all, Abba over all. And Jesus now encourages us to approach him as a father. I love when my children approach me as a father. It depends on what they've either done or uh, what they're wanting or what they are desiring. Uh, a lot of times, uh, my dad called this uh, the hey dad's disease. Uh, my father calls it the hey dad's disease because a lot of times if you start with, hey dad, that means you need something. <laughs> But even in those two words, hey, dad, and I just want to pause here right now. Janet Shell is watching. Just want to do a shout out to you, Janet. Thank you for joining us tonight. We are praying for you and for your family and for Scott uh, diligently. Um, and we pray with, with this type of prayer, our Father. But this is the pattern that Jesus is telling us to do and starting with our Father. It's just like when my children come to me and say, hey, dad. Hey, Dad, it's the same thing. Well, how we approach Father, how we approach God now can be on more of a personal level. Our Father. Hey, Abba. Hey, Dad. Uh, I have a favor. Can you heal? <laughs> can you help? Can you have mercy? But our Father in heaven, holy is your name. And the beauty of that is, yes, he is in heaven, but yes, he is fully God and fully capable of walking beside us. So take this just for a moment. See how it says in heaven, which is feeling a little impersonal because that's somewhere out there. We don't know where heaven is. We always look up when we say heaven, but where is this other dimensional place known as heaven? But if you put those two things together, if you say, he, yes, he's in heaven, which may, feel, may seem impersonal. But when you take that and you attach that to our Father, who art in heaven, when you put those two things together, he is still an intimate God that wants to have relationship with us because he's Father. He's not with us, we might feel, in the present. We might feel as if he's not here, he's not near us. But just that right there, he is our Father. He is in heaven, but he is also able to be right where we are, walking right beside you and where you are and what you are going through. And remember... Jesus is the one teaching us to pray this way. So the Lord's Prayer becomes a pattern for God's children to offer genuine praise to the Lord. And what I do with my, when I, when I start my prayers with our Father in heaven, holy is your name, this becomes a time for me to simply worship. Like I said, I take all these. Our Father in heaven, holy is your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses. These become headings 
to the different times that I pray throughout the day, different prayers that I have, and it helps me to have that outline. And I will break it down into an outline form and I will pray. And sometimes I pray the whole Lord's Prayer as my pattern and I add to it. What I add to this one right here, our Father in heaven, holy is your name, is I have a time of worship. I just have a time, I'll bring up a song on my phone or uh, I will read a psalm in my Bible. I actually break open the old, remember those old books called Bibles, you know, with pages and not just on our phone. I will break that open and I will look into Psalms and I will read a Psalm. But this becomes a, a chance for me. This becomes a moment to worship the Father because he has said, I am here. I am with you. I am your Father. And if any of you know, uh, if you if you ex- are a father, if you've experienced being a father, or if you have a father, hopefully uh, you've had a good relationship with your father in some way. Uh, I know that a lot of us haven't. Um, I am feeling like one of the rare people who have had a fantastic relationship with my father, but that was by design because he did not have a fantastic relationship with his father. So he said, when I become a father, I'm going to do it differently. And he definitely did. So I can relate to that. But that's why I am the father I am today, because I've seen that modeled for me and for my father, who took the pattern of worshiping his father, God, in heaven. And that became a pattern. And when my children come to me and say, hey, I need this and I need that and uh, help me with this, I will do all those things because that's, that's what they're asking me to do. There are some things I know they'll ask me that I'm just not going to get for them because I know it's not good for them, even though they necessarily want it. It's not a good thing. But their needs and the things that they have to have uh, to help them in their lives, I am going to provide that because I am their father. But I also love, and here's what worship is, I also love when I'm sitting in my chair, uh, maybe watching something on TV, and one of my children will come and say, hey, Dad, can I sit with you for a moment? Not Ethan. He and I would not fit in the same chair. One of the little ones, but he did this when he was little too. He'd crawl up and he'd sit next to me, and he wouldn't have to say necessarily a word. He just had to sit there in my presence, and I just felt this is this is those first two words in that in in the Lord's prayer, our Father. And we sit there and we crawl up on Dad's lap, and we just want to be in His presence, and that becomes the worship piece. That becomes the worship part of f- worshiping Father God. So it's a, it's a mind-blowing thing that Jesus starts off the model prayer by saying, Our Father in heaven, holy is your name. I'm hoping that you'll see that tonight, that you see how mind-blowing that is. For It, it radically changed an entire culture. Just those first two words, our Father. So this becomes a pattern. So here's, here's your homework. Here's a question to consider. Reflect on the idea of the Lord's Prayer as a temple prayer. How is that a temple prayer? You are a temple. If you're praying, how is this a temple prayer? And how does this impact your understanding of praying to our Father? How does that impact your understanding of praying to our Father? So reflect on that. Like I said at the beginning, you can go ahead and download the app uh, that I'm going through. Let me get the name of the app again here. It's on one of my pages. (laughs) Uh, It is called... um, It is called... Here we are. A Journey from Worry to Confident Hope. Praying through the Lord's Prayer with N.T. Wright. Go ahead and download that app. Take that every day. Tomorrow we'll be doing two because I want to get all of it done in one week or in five days rather than seven. Uh, but you can follow along with that app 
as we go. But reflect today on the idea of the Lord's Prayer. And then, we, you know, we just finished a series in James called Living Out Loud. Well, here are the two things that we can do to live out loud. In what context might the Lord's Prayer have a practical impact on your interactions with others in your family right now. Some of you might still be working or uh, in the internet, uh, you're, maybe you're working from home or maybe you are going in. But what about your interactions with people in your workplace? And how, how can the Lord's Prayer impact our community today? And what praises or concerns can you bring before God, our Father, today? These are good things for all of us to, to know, uh, know about and, and to look at practically this, this pattern of prayer that we have. So every night for the rest of this week, uh, I'll be looking at uh, two more of the different uh, uh, parts of the Lord's Prayer. And the reason we're praying this is we're getting our hearts ready for uh, some uh, this coming Sunday and also uh, it's the Easter season. I believe in, in my thinking that Easter season starts this coming Sunday with Palm Sunday. Don't forget we are going to be taking, uh, oh, Ruth Holt is on right now. There she is. <laughs> Hi, Mom. And uh, this coming Sunday, April 5th, I'll be teaching on communion. And if you want to take it live with me, there'll be three different times that you can take it live with me, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, and 11 o'clock. I'll be in the lobby of the church, and I will take it on Facebook Live. You can't come to the church. You take it at home. But if you want to go ahead and you want to get uh, the elements on your own and take that with us, uh, we'll be taking that this Sunday on Facebook Live. It's going to be the church's Facebook page, not mine. It's going to be the church's 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, and 11 o'clock. And I pray and hope that you are safe and that you are well, that you are continually praying, that you're taking the Lord's Prayer and you're making this a part of your everyday pattern of prayer in your own life and that you are worshiping Him. Our Father, in heaven, holy is your name. So tonight I'd like to pray, and I want to pray uh, specifically for uh, New York. I know New York is, uh, I just saw on the news right before I came here that uh, for a, a time, I guess recently, New York was uh, losing uh, the life of people every three minutes to COVID-19. And so we need to be praying. They've become the new epicenter of uh, at least the United States at this time. And uh, I have a special place in my heart for New York City, uh, for the whole state of New York. As most of you know, I live there. So I want to pray for New York tonight. So can we go ahead and just pray right now? And I uh, just pray, Our Father in heaven, Holy is your name, and we just come before you right now, and we honor you, and we worship you, and we thank you for your uh, strength, and your power, and your grace, and your glory, and who you are, and we, we thank you that you have created us to be who we are. And Father, right now, even though we are not together and assembling together as a church, thank you so much that we are still the church. The church may not be in the building, but the church is not a building. It's a people. And Father, I pray for all those who are watching and for all those who uh, uh, maybe you don't even know, but all of our members of this church. And Lord, I just pray for all the churches in this area and all the pastors. I think of Pastor Tom Donnelly and Pastor Matt Schuller and Pastor Eric Johnson and uh, Pastor Jim Dulkey, all the pastors of the different churches in this area, Father God, right now, that you would help us to be a united front in prayer for our leadership, uh, both uh, just uh, local and regional and in our state. We pray for our governor and her decisions and uh, let her make them not for any political reason and or any political agenda, but let them be uh, something that she is seeking you for in some way and that your power would just radically change the lives of us and those of the lives around us. And Father, right now we just pray for a healing, Father God, in New York City.
We pray that this would uh, peak and turn the corner, Father God, in the next few days. We would just pray that uh, that you would make this happen. You are still a God of miracles, and we pray for a miracle right now in New York City, that they would turn the corner, and that would be the end of it. We begin to uh, come down, Father God, and, and people's lives would be healed in all of this, and the deaths would just stop, Lord God, that, that you would have mercy on New York City, that you would have uh, mercy on those people. And thank you, Father, for what you are doing in our lives, in our nation, in our world. We pray, pray the same prayer right now for Italy and for Spain as well, Lord God, that you would begin to heal the people in those places as well. And I pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank you for joining up tonight. I hope this uh, was something that was good for you. It was good for me. And uh, we'll be back here tomorrow night right at 7 o'clock. Hopefully you can jump on and be a part of this. Uh, this, uh, what, what I just did here, what I just uh, uh, presented is going to be on our website uh, probably uh, either by the end of this evening or tomorrow morning. So if you want to watch it on the website in full, if you don't get it here on Facebook, you'll be able to see it. So I would pray that the Lord would bless you and that the Lord would keep you and that he would make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you, that he'd lift up his countenance and give you and your family his peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 God bless you. Love all of you. Can't wait to see you. Uh, I'm probably going to hug every single one of you when I see you and uh, I probably won't let go. So be blessed. Good night.